Daddy? Yeah? You know I can uh, speak like Hitler? Oh no, I didn't know that. You want to hear it, Daddy? Ah, oh, sure, so let me hear it. <laughs> Stop it, you idiot bird! Oh, daddy, I need to sit. Ich muss scheißen. Bye bye, pieces of shit. Bye. Okay, this uh, video is about a V2 rocket, or the name is uh, A4, the German uh, V2 rocket. Let's see uh, what they told my uh, grandparents. Forward of the tail unit are V2 fuel tanks. First, the liquid oxygen tank, then the alcohol tank. Here they are during the assembly of an actual rocket. These four vanes, made of carbon to resist the heat, are situated in the jet and they can control the rocket only while the jet is burning. This period of control lasts for 60 to 70 seconds and covers the first 20 miles of the trajectory up to the all burnt position. When it has reached the all burnt position, the rocket is a free projectile, just like any artillery shell after it has left the muzzle of the gun. This is what actually happened when the Germans fired on London from The Hague. The distance is nearly 200 miles, the maximum range of the A4. The rocket was controlled for the first 20 miles of its flight, or until the jet had stopped burning. At this point, its velocity is 6,500 feet per second, and it is at 43 degrees angle of elevation. It keeps on climbing until it has reached a height of 50 miles, which is halfway on its journey. Then, still traveling towards London, it starts to fall. But it is slowed up to a velocity of 4,000 feet per second by the resistance of the air. So... Let me get this straight. They launched this, and after 20 miles, the jet stopped because uh, there is no fuel anymore. And then it uh, travels another uh, 80 miles or more in this trajectory because it's uh, an arch, it's not a straight line. So without uh, any propulsion, it climbed up to an altitude of 50 miles with uh, 6,500 uh, feet per second, which is uh, 4,400 uh, miles per hour. And then when it's here, it still has uh, a speed of 4 thousand feet per second, four thousand, that's two thousand seven hundred miles per hour. So you tell me, this projectile can do this without any propulsion? No way, this is impossible, even with that speed. This is just a bullshit video. Propaganda to brainwash uh, 
my grandma and my grandpa 180 miles without propulsion but this is an arch 300 kilometer from Holland to London and over 300 kilometer this arch will be uh, 340 kilometer I just calculated it So we added another uh, 25 miles uh, to it without propulsion going uh, in an upward motion without propulsion of course and then uh, it come here but I wonder uh, if the people here uh, hear the sonic boom Because uh, this is uh, going uh, faster than the speed of sound. Two times the speed of sound, at least, when it's here. We yeah, identified about uh, 3,172 uh, of those rockets. So we should hear uh, 3,172 uh, sonic booms. Especially the people in uh, London. The North American X-15. NASA's 666 uh, rocket plane. Could fly with the speed of Mach 6. and develop a temperature of 1200 uh, degrees Fahrenheit Mach 4, 5 and 6 we had to, de to be designed to withstand uh, aerodynamic temperatures in order of 1200 degrees Fahrenheit It had a special high string nickel alloy named Iconel X. 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. So, this thing is made of sheet metal. Its speed was even a little bit faster than the X-15 uh, rocket plane. It had 725 kilogram or 1600 pound of high explosive behind sheet metal 650 degrees Celsius or 1200 degrees Fahrenheit This is just a fantasy rocket they all uh, have should uh, blow up none uh, could have reached uh, England it's all garbage you see how you can use uh, their own words against them it's garbage and of course uh, we can uh, find a fakery in the X15 uh, project His uh, suit is open. The one man who represents all the others who have worked so long and so hard to make the project a success. His suit is closed. So somebody uh, changed it in the way in a couple of seconds. Somebody closed it up. And uh, when he sits in the plane it's all open again. Oh, they have designed and built an aircraft. Now, may they made the camera go up the stairs. Aircraft that could be piloted into space and flown back safely to a controlled landing on it. As if uh, the astronaut uh, do it himself. 
Earth. They have accumulated important data on... Here is a uh, suit looks open again, but I cannot see it uh, clearly. Aerodynamic heating at hypersonic speeds. They've learned about stability and control of aircraft during flight in near space and re-entry to the Earth's atmosphere. And perhaps most important of all... It looks open here. ...space and re-entry to the Earth's atmosphere. Yeah, it looks open. It's not uh, silver here. So here it's open. And perhaps most important of all, they have dramatized the potential of... Yeah, you dramatize uh, everything, idiot. ...piloted high-performance aircraft in a space environment. Now his suit is open again. We can see that here. At a time when much of the world's gaze was turned toward orbital flight. Garbage. Let's uh, check some more uh, from this video. So this thing uh, can burn uh, 8 tons of fuel in 60, 70 seconds. Let's see how they uh, fuel it up. Meanwhile, the fueling troop were bringing up their fuel train. The train consisted of a towed alcohol bowser, a self-propelled alcohol bowser towing a trailer pump, then the towed liquid oxygen vehicle, And finally, the bowser for t stoff or hydrogen peroxide. The fueling vehicles were concealed near the launching site until needed. When the preliminary tests were completed, the alcohol vehicles were called from their temporary parking place. Alcohol was always the first fuel to be filled in the rocket. The liquid oxygen trailer was the next fueling vehicle to arrive at the launching site. The Germans always tried to fuel the liquid oxygen within an hour of the time of firing the rocket to avoid freezing up the valves. This arrangement of fueling vehicles round the Meilewagen was a typical German layout. As well as the alcohol and oxygen vehicles on either side, the t stoff vehicle is directly in front of the rocket. The liquid oxygen is fed in at the middle of the rocket. The pump is connected to the permanent delivery pipe on the arm of the Meilewagen. By now, the oxygen fueling is in full swing, and the pipes through which the liquid oxygen is traveling begin to show the characteristic formation of ice and snow. The oxygen fueling took about eight minutes to complete. Now that the alcohol fueling of the rocket was finished, the pump was disconnected and the alcohol bowsers began to move off. As the job of each fueling vehicle was finished, it was driven away from the launching site. So you pumped all this uh, fuel in this rocket. So this is when the truck arrives and this is when it leaves. It looks like uh, the truck didn't uh, race when you load it uh, in uh, 4,000 uh, liters or 4 tons of fuel, liquid oxygen. There is not much uh, change about this height. You see that? So what do you load in? This looks the same. You know, normally uh, when you uh, unload, this rise up. But it's the same. It's impossible. Let's see the other truck. 
Hier is die ze uh, alcoholtruck. We need that house. Let's see the wheel uh, hide. Or how do you call that? Let me make this a little bit bigger. So this is when it arrives. And this is when it leaves. So how much uh, fuel they uh, loaded in? Nothing. It's just garbage. This is not correct. You have the same uh, height. It's garbage. So during this uh, video, they show how to set up this uh, V2 rocket. You can check the video for yourself. Let's uh, have a look at it. Is lowered. Then the firing troop take cover in the slit trenches they've dug near the rocket. The troop commander goes to the firing control vehicle. The control panel from which the rocket is fired is in this vehicle. Final steering tests are made. And then the firing troop commander gives his orders. Hey, wait for the cameraman. He has to go in. The steering clear is clear. The streetwear clear is clear. Schlüssel aufschießen. Schlüssel steht aufschießen. Durchschalten. The cameraman is still outside. Is durchgeschaltet. Why is the cameraman uh, still outside with this camera in front of your face? You cannot see with the cameraman in front of your face. He changed shots from this to this. Did I uh, pause the launch? Piece of trash. We can always uh, spot this uh, crap on uh, war uh, videos. Now I think I saw three different rockets. Here, let's have a look. This one uh, have a band missing here. You know, it's taken from the same angle. Fit the screen. Fit the screen. It's garbage. It's a scene. It's a movie production. And even uh, when we see this rocket uh, up in the air, it's a different rocket.
It's a different rocket. We can see this band here. We can see this band here. We can see no band here. And this is one straight line from black and white. And here it is not. Just garbage. Looks different. So you launch this thing, and then uh, you make a cut in the video, and then you see this uh, different uh, rocket. Why this break? It seems to be a uh, cut in uh, following uh, those rockets. It reaches an altitude of 40 to 50,000 feet, a vapor trail condenses in its wake, just like the trail made by high flying aircraft. The effect of the rocket going down is an optical illusion caused by the angle of the camera which shot this scene. The rocket's still going up, all right. Yeah, we see that. It's going up, idiot. They use this uh, launching table. And uh, they don't uh, bolt it down, they just uh, place it on the ground and uh, put this uh, 45 uh, foot uh, 12 ton rocket on it. You cannot bolt this thing on the ground could take the weight of the platform. This was done so that the towing dolly could be removed. The launching table is placed over a surveyed mark on the launching site. This is done so that the rocket can be accurately orientated later on. The towing dolly was pulled out and wheeled away. The launching table has an adjustable jack on each leg. No holes to bolt it down. No holes to bolt it down. It's just freestanding. It's dangerous. They are not scared. This thing blows over by the wind or something like that. Look at this, 12 tons. This is idiot. It's impossible. And this uh, rocket rests on those uh, four uh, tiny wings. This rocket has the motor attached to the tank compartment, which is now complete. The other half shell has been added. But the control compartment is not on the rocket yet. Now we see a tail unit ready to be added to the rocket. Wiring is being... This looks like paper mache. Now we see a tail... So this rocket is gonna rest on those... Uh, wings. Tail unit ready to be added to the rocket. 
Wiring is being connected so that the rocket can be tested for electrical continuity. Or you can make it rest on uh, four little knobs here. Four or five tons without fuel. It's idiot. It's impossible. The rocket is resting on this uh, thin metal. No way. Twelve tons. The other end, the warhead is secured. This wasn't the normal German practice at this stage, but we wanted the warhead on the rocket so that we could lift it into the proofing tower. See this uh, big church here. And when this rocket comes down, we see nothing. And then suddenly uh, this church appears. And the poles disappear. Idiots. On June 13, 1944, on the Channel coast of Europe, the age of the missile dawns. Vergeltung 1, vengeance weapon number one, V-1, is fired against England by Adolf Hitler. London, battered, bloody, but unbowed after four years of bombing, looks to the skies, bewildered. Yeah, they all open the windows and look to the sky. Yeah, that's what we all do when we hear uh, bombs. What is this strange object? The Allies of land. Yeah, what is it? Yeah, walk outside, put the camera man and uh, look up. And in France, surely the war is almost over. Oh yeah, yeah. Again the cameraman. Look up guys. Egg horse. You all looking up? Yeah, look up, don't run away. Don't hide. Again a fake uh, bullshit with the switch. It's just garbage. Yeah, there are many cameras. Always present. Even uh, under the planes. Here, everywhere cameras.
In August 1940, the Battle of Britain opened. Hitler hurls 2,300 planes into the Adler Angriff, the Eagle attack, against 704 British fighters. The Luftwaffe is contemptuously confident. filming this this camera is not even on the wing how do you do this in the air during the Battle of Britain how do we do this it's impossible it's productions, it's fake bullshit. Here, another one. What is a uh, hole, sort of. Or what, in the wing? Who's filming this? are launched against London. Yeah, that's some nice uh, sound effects. A new chapter opens, the Battle of the Flying Bombs. The Allied invasion forces Hitler's hand before he is fully ready, and from the Channel Coast, V-1s rain upon London. If I was you, I would hide and do a bunker because uh, maybe there's coming more if you see one. B-2 cannot be heard and is but rarely seen before it strikes. And so on September 8, 1944, the first V-2 is fired against England. So we could see uh, burning for a long time. Twenty twenty-two. The Dornberger to Werner von Braun. Say so, uh, they started at twenty twenty-four. V 2s designer on the day of its first successful launch. Do you realize what we have accomplished today? Today the spaceship was born. So we uh, almost could see it for uh, 23 seconds 
And earlier in my video, you saw this guy uh, say it only can uh, burn for 60 seconds. So there is uh, just more than 30 seconds left of fuel to reach that uh, 6,500 feet per second speed. <laughs> People, it's all bullshit. So fake. Anyways, peace. Pieces of shit. Pieces of shit.